drink your milkshake. You know, it's not necessarily new sellers come in that push a market lower. What pushes a market lower is when there's just no more buyers, right? And, you know, you've a lot of the buyers that we've seen for the last six weeks have been forced buyers or people that are covering. And so now that, you know, there's no longer any forced uh, buyers that, that are getting squeezed, I'm not sure. And, you know, you have some of the New Year's flows that kind of came in at the beginning of the year are no longer there. You know, I think there's, I don't, I don't want to say the buyers are going to, you know, absolutely disappear, but I don't think you're going to see them at the same level. And, you know, as we, as we've talked about many times, as we get further into this year and the effects of rate hikes that really just started nine or 10 months ago, start to get felt more and more in the economy. I just think that we're due for a very hard pullback. Well, speaking of buyers missing in action, um, you had shared a, a chart um, on Credit Suisse. Now, <laughs> is this is this kind of deja vu with some of the stuff we saw with Deutsche Bank? Um, does does a bank yeah. stock price even matter? It does, and I'll I'll tell you why it matters. It matters for a couple of reasons. Um, you know, one of the reasons is it, it affects morale. I mean, if you are working at Credit Suisse and you see the stock price continuing to go down. At some point, you have to start thinking about self-preservation, because if the bank goes under, everybody's looking for a new job. But if everybody's looking for a new job, there's a lot more competition for those jobs that aren't that you know that, that are not that uh, plentiful. And so, you know, at some point, you've got to start saying, "Do I jump off the ship before the ship goes down?" That's one thing. The second thing is, and this actually happened to me back in 2008, is you know, bonuses were typically historically paid in cash. But there, you know, subsequent to 2008, when with the global financial crisis, they paid some bonuses in, they called them, you know, I, I, what was the, I don't remember the technical term, but it was basically these toxic assets that were on their balance sheet that they couldn't get rid of. And so they said, okay, here's your bonus, but it's made up of these, you know, mortgage-backed securities and, you know, distressed debt financing deals. And by the way, you can't sell them for four years, but the money's yours. So, so and, and that's kind of happening again right now. I, I, I haven't seen the latest thing over, the, but I know a couple of days ago they were, you know, bonuses typically get paid in you know, late January, sometime in February. Um, they were saying that the bonuses were going to be half of what they were expected to be, and then they were going to pay them in installments. And so, you know, one of the things about Wall Street, whether you like it or not, is there's a lot of very talented people that work there. And if, you know, if, if they don't feel that they're getting paid with a, are worth or, or or should be paid, and there's an opportunity for them to go do their same job at a firm across the street and get cash as opposed to illiquid securities. They're going to do that, and if 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 all your talent leaves, then what do you have left, right? So, I, and not only that, but then clients see this too. When, when if you're a you know if you're a multi-millionaire billionaire and you've got you know. 20 million bucks or 100 million bucks at Credit Suisse and you see the stock price keep going down at some point, you got to start thinking about self-preservation as well, right? And then, you know, that's it's the it's the quintessential run on the bank. Once that happens, you know, it's just it's hard to stem the tide and that that's part of the reason that the stock price has come down so much is 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 uh, clients have pulled a lot of money from Credit Suisse. And so, you know, my guess is that it's going to bounce here. You know, it, the Swiss will not let it go bankrupt. So I, I think Credit Suisse will still be around, but it, whether it's owned by the Swiss government and the Swiss people, or whether it's still a private company, I think I think that's uh, that that's the the big uh, that's the big debate. So it's the perfect visual of how did you go broke slowly then all at once. So um, good chart there, a good explanation on that. It's, yeah, it's pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, it's yeah. interesting to to have an appreciation for. The, the morale component to a stock price, especially in a big financial organization in a, in a highly competitive market like the Wall Street um, investment world is. Well, I figure yeah. we, speaking of and things- And I'll, I'll give people, a, I'll, yeah. let me give people, let me, let me say one thing before I forget, John, sorry to interrupt you. But uh, yeah, one good. kind of interesting thing, you know, in the, in the US, you know, the, the Credit Suisse offices are mainly in New York, and then, you know, there's a lot of competitors that they could do, but in Switzerland, you know, in Zurich, the the UBS headquarters and the Credit Suisse headquarters are literally right next to each other. 
And a lot of those guys, they, they make one move in their career. They're either moved from Credit Suisse to UBS or UBS to Credit Suisse. And when they move, they just literally just walk across the street. So it, it's going to be very, very interesting if one of them comes into great trouble, how this all shakes out. I mean, maybe they merge and maybe it's just, uh, you know, there used to be a union bank of Switzerland. Maybe that's what they'll make this. Maybe, maybe they'll merge the two and it'll just be the, the, bank, the, the bank of Switzerland.